Good morning, everyone. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday, and um, we'll be uh, gathering out it there with some of you can go out there for the blessing of the palms. Otherwise, uh, the rest can stay in here due to COVID spacing. Uh, but if you don't have a poem, make sure you get one uh, for the blessing. Please stand. <clears throat> Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery. That is to say, of the de passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being my made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following him, kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, Let us go forth in peace. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Thank you. 
ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I may know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked me. My face I did not shield, my buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. you 
to my people and proclaim you in their midst. Oh, fear the Lord, my people, give glory to God's name. My God, my God, oh, why have you Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. For the reading of the Passion, you can follow along in the booklets in your pews. Turn to page 13 for the Gospel of Mark, and you can take the part of the chorus. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, A woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. (coughs) She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you. 
wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you. I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep. 
for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We've heard him say, I will destroy this temple in David's hands, and within three days I will build another, not made in his hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, have you no answer? What are these men testifying against me? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? We have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemn, condemned him as serving to die, deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what are you talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. 
They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release you to the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. <laughs> Pilate said to them, why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests, with the scribes, mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, so that we may see him in him. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait. Let us see Elijah, if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last.
the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James, and of Joses, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. What a great church day. Of course, the solemnity and the, the pain that we just read through is very touching. And I remember as a, as a young boy listening through the Passion, I remember being able to almost repeat it word for word by heart. But also today everyone gets a palm branch to wave around to weave into a shape, to hang behind religious pictures at home it was also a part of the tradition. We got something. Mom and Dad couldn't say anything because we got to get a palm, and of course, we got a stern look if we were waving it too much. And I uh, remember going through that with my own children as well. Just a little side reminder, the palms, as you know, are blessed. So no sword fighting, kids. And uh, Make sure that they receive a place of honor in your home. Palm Sunday is also the first day of Holy Week. In just one week, we will celebrate the holiest and most important day in all of human history. Easter Sunday, the resurrection of the Lord. Everything we believe, everything we hope for, everything we will become, God willing, comes to us because of what happened on that first Easter. There is so much going on here in these Bible verses that literally hundreds of volumes have been written over the ages to explore their full meaning. Jesus' earthly mission is nearly complete. God himself has entered into the human drama, no holds barred. He has perfectly assumed our human nature by being born into a human family. He has experienced us at our best and certainly at our worst. He has seen and experienced both our glory and our depravity. He has done battle with the forces of evil. He has shown us the way to the Father. He has taught us, admonished us, healed us, and delivered us. And now today on Palm Sunday, we celebrate the event that begins our Lord's full week of passion and death. This begins very well. I can imagine the apostles talking among themselves. Perhaps they were remembering that Jesus had prophesied that when he went to Jerusalem, they would put him to death. Now the citizens of Jerusalem are in festive spirit as Jesus enters into the city. They are laying down their cloaks and spreading palm branches ahead of him. Maybe they were thinking, wow, this is great. We thought they were going to put him to death, but it looks like they're going to crown him king. You see, every faithful Jew 
would have known the prophecies of the coming of the Messiah, and there are many of them. They would have known that the Messiah would come into the city from the east to restore the glory of Yahweh to the temple, as was prophesied in Ezekiel. They would have known the prophecy of Zechariah in chapter 9, which describes the restoration of the kingdom of David. Exalt greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. A just savior is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And exalt they did. They rejoiced and danced, and there was great commotion and expectant joy among the people. They had heard of his teaching in parables. They had seen the great crowds following him and how he fed them by the multiplication of the loaves and fishes and of many other wondrous miracles. Could it really be that the Messiah had come at long last? Yes. On that day, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, many, if not most, of the crowd was convinced that he indeed was the Messiah. But what came at long last didn't last long. The first thing Jesus did was to go to the temple and overturn the money changers' tables. You see, while the Jews wanted the Messiah to come, they wanted him on their own terms. They wanted a warrior king who would drive out the Romans. Instead, charges were brought against him with false testimony, charges which distorted truth and embellished the lie. Did he really say that he and the Father are one? Did he really violate the law of Moses by healing on the Sabbath? They believed him and welcomed him and loved him for a short while and then rejected him as a blasphemer, an enemy to God. Fast forward some 2,000 years to our day. We as Catholic Christians know that Jesus is Lord. He is the Messiah King and has come to save us from darkness and death. We profess it in the creed. It seems though that some of the voices we hear around us are telling us a different story. They are saying that the Church of Jesus Christ is irrelevant, hateful, and intolerant. I would like to read to you a fictional dialogue that you may have seen on Facebook. I think it illustrates this point well. This is a dialogue between a person and the Catholic Church. Person, I want to do X. Now consider X, you can fill in the blank. X is any moral teaching that the Church has put forth that others don't agree with. Okay, so you can fill in the blank. Starting again. Person, I want to do X. Catholic Church, you are free to do it. Person, but you think X is wrong. Church, yes. Person, because you want to control me. Church, no. You are free to do what you want. Person, but you think X is wrong. Church, yes, but only because I want your ultimate good. Person, but I want to do X. Church, you are free to do it. Person, but I want you to say that X is good. Church, I cannot say that. Person, why do you hate me? The church is thought of as hateful because she fearlessly holds to the truth that comes from God. The narrative we hear now, sometimes from the culture around us, tell us that Jesus was a good teacher and a philosopher only. They think of him as another example of a wise and radical dreamer who lived a long time ago. They think of him and of his church as outdated. They only want Jesus on their own terms, and they try to fit him into their own mold or worldview. Let us not be tricked by that narrative. Let us not be swayed by public opinion. The truth is never outdated. Jesus is not just a wise guy or a philosopher teacher. Rather, he is the second person of the Trinity, 
our divine Savior and Messiah, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the God-man. Let us pray in this remaining week of Lent that Jesus may find a resting place in our hearts and a willingness to boldly and charitably stand up for the truth in the public square. May all of us seek to know him, love him, and serve him more and more in this world so we can live forever with him in the next. Let us pray together our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Jesus enters victoriously into Jerusalem to do his Father's will, we turn to the Father united with our crucified Savior and offer these petitions. The response, merciful Lord, hear our prayer that all Christians may embrace the joy of this Holy Week with a commitment to repent of past sins and strive for holiness, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are to be received into the church at the Easter Vigil, that these final days of preparation will be a time of transforming grace, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been condemned to death that the Spirit of God will lead them to conversion and a new life, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world and an end to violence, that the death of Christ may turn all hearts from violence and give them courage to seek new ways to resolve conflicts, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, that more young men and women will have the courage to follow a call from God to serve in the church, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from the coronavirus and other illnesses, that God will heal the sick, give strength to those who care for them, and guide the distribution and administration of the vaccines, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Marge and Carl Stefanski and Jerry Detterman, whom we remember at Mass this weekend. May they be blessed with eternal happiness in heaven, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, by the holy cross of Christ, your Son has redeemed the world. Help us to take up his cross and to be united with Christ in his passion. We ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Love is this, oh my soul, oh my 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all of his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, 
whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins." Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, 
Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, P Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the tree We have received Jesus in the Eucharist and we ask him to be with us in our suffering and passion so that we can be joined with him in the resurrection.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The, our announcements for this week. On Monday is the Chrism Mass, at which the bishop will bless the oils to be used throughout the diocese for the coming year. And it's, on, it's at 2 p.m. at the Basilica of St. Stanislaus. You can watch it live stream on the diocesan Facebook page. Tuesday, the Mass will be at Holy Family at 5.30 p.m., followed by Stations of the Cross, as usual. Holy Thursday, the Mass will be at 7 p.m. here at St. John Vianney. Good Friday services at 3 p.m. at St. John Vianney and 6 p.m. at Holy Family. The Easter Vigil is Saturday night at 8 p.m. here at St. John Vianney. We'll gather out by the fire. Easter morning Mass, in order to accommodate more people, we have three Masses now on Easter morning. First one is at 7.30 a.m. at Holy Family, then 9.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. here at St. John Vianney. In order to help us plan and prepare, please make your reservations on the website or call the parish office. We have confessions available on Wednesday, March 31st from 5 to 7 p.m. and on Good Friday from noon until 2 here at St. John Vianney. Please bring your rice bowls to Mass on Holy Thursday. The collection on Good Friday is, as always, for the Holy Land and supports the pastoral, charitable, and educational works of the Catholic Church in the Holy Land. Little white books for Easter meditations will be available in the gathering space on Thursday for your meditation during Easter season. Adoration will be closed on Holy Thursday beginning at 4 p.m. until Monday morning after Easter. The Divine Mercy Novena will be prayed at 3 p.m. daily at St. John Vianney Church from Good Friday through Saturday, April 10th. And then we'll have a celebration for Divine Mercy Sunday, 12.30 to 2, with the chaplet, adoration, and confessions. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Try on.
Thanks come God.